I'm going to demonstrate how to do full truth tables. I have two examples to do today. The first example is to use a full truth table to determine if the following argument is valid. Now, when we always start, we just create our master sort of truth table here. We have a column for each and every single atomic or connective, and we also have a column for each logical atomic that um, appears in our argument, so PQR. Now to start, we should always just generate the truth values for PQR and distribute them through. So to for uh, a, a truth table that has three different atomic letters, we use the theorem there's two to the n rows, so this will have eight rows. Now the easy way to generate this is to split everything in half. So P splits the eight rows in half, then Q splits P in half, so TTFF, TTFF, and then R splits Q in half. T F T F T F T F. If you do it this way, you just don't really have to think. It's very easy, and it always works. Now, the next thing to do is always just to copy out all your uh, truth values for your atomics. Now, obviously, I'm using a computer, so this is much faster, but there's no real difference. If you just do this by hand, just do this move immediately, and your truth table should look like this. Now, at this point, I haven't really done any thinking. I'm just sort of doing the automatic uh, moves here. Okay, so what I want to do next is actually identify my main connective. So if I look at this first premise, what's my main connective? Well, I see that the brackets clearly indicate that this is one unit here, and then the OR binds everything. So I'm just going to insert a little arrow here that will indicate to me that the OR is the main connective. Uh, for the second premise, I also look, it's either the negation or the OR. Well, the negation only modifies what's next to it, so it's also the OR. And then for my conclusion, it's clearly also the conditional for the exact same reason. Now all I have to do is actually just evaluate uh, the truth tables here uh, for the connectives and then I'll be able to assess if this is valid. So you always work towards the main connective. So let's actually do the conclusion first. It's nice and easy. So the first thing is I want to do the conditional here, but to do that I need to have the value of the antecedent as well as the consequent. So to get the value of the consequent, it's Q, that's no problem, but the value of the antecedent is not P. So first I need the negation. Now negation is really easy. Negation just flips the value of whatever it's modifying. So if P is for true, for false, negation P is for false, for true, and that's very easy. Now the thing is, when I'm looking to evaluate this conditional, now I know that the consequent is Q, but the antecedent is not P, and so the truth value of the antecedent is always symbolized by its main connective. So the main connective here is the negation, so to evaluate the conditional truth value, I look at the negation column, which represents the antecedent, and the Q column, which is the consequent. And remember, conditional is only false in one case. If the antecedent is true, and the consequent is false. So here, wherever the antecedent is false, I automatically know that the conditional is true, so I don't even need to think about that. Over here, though, when the antecedent is true, I have to be careful. It's true, true is true, true, true is also true, but notice true, false, that means the conditional is false, true, false, that means the conditional is false. <clears throat> so there I've evaluated the uh, conclusion properly. Now over here, I do the same thing, not R or Q. First I need not R, so that's easy. I just flip all this. And now again, for the OR, I'm looking at both disjuncts. The right disjunct is just Q, the left disjunct is not R, but the main connective always represents the truth value of that section. So I look at negation column as well as the Q column and combine them for the disjunction. So here the disjunction will be true. Why? Because a disjunction is true whenever either side or both are true, or equivalently, a disjunction is false when both sides are false. So if I see a true anywhere, I know that it's true. Uh, and I just keep going, false and true. Okay. Finally, over here, to get this disjunction, the right disjunct is R, but for premise 1, the left disjunct is this big complicated thing. Okay, so what I could do is I could actually identify the, the secondary main connective uh, of this sort of thing here, and I realize it's the conjunction AND. So to get the AND, I need to build up both conjuncts. The P is no problem, but I need the not Q, so that's easy, false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true. And now to evaluate the AND, the left conjunct is P, the right conjunct is not Q, and I only look at the negation column for that, and AND is true in only one case when both are true. So this is false, false, 
true, true, false, 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 false. Now I can look at the or. The or, the left disjunct, is this entire thing, but this entire thing's truth value is only represented right here by the main connective column. And the right conjunct is R. So I'm looking here, the conjunction, and R to combine my truth value for the disjunction. True, false. True, 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 false, true, false. Okay, so completing the truth table is pretty straightforward. Now what you can do is really just realize that you just need to focus on these columns here. So I could highlight them to make my job a little easier. The reason why is the main connective always just represents the truth value of that sentence. So if I want to know when the first premise is true or false, I just need to look at the truth value of the column of the main connective. Now what I'm looking for are all instances where the um, where the premises are true. So now I'm looking across row-wise and I'm trying to find where both premises are true. So notice in the first one, in the first TVA, it is the case that both premises are true. So I'll highlight that this color. In the second TVA, the first premise is false, so that's no good. In the third, the second, the second premise is false, and so on. So what I can just sort of do is I can just sort of cross-highlight here and realize that these are uh, the rows that I'm interested in. Uh, false, false, false. So in the end, only the first, fourth, and fifth row are such that all the premises are true. Now just a reminder, why am I trying to find out about when the premises are true? It's because this question is asking me about validity. And validity, I'm interested when all the premises are true. And what I'm looking to see is if all, when all the premises are true, is it possible for the conclusion to be false? So all I need to do is look at the conclusion column and realize that in row 1, 4, and 5, which is where the premises are true, the conclusion is always true. So in the end, this argument is valid because whenever the premises are true, the conclusion is also true. So that's how we do this. Okay. Let's go down to our second question. Use a full truth table to determine if the set of sentences is consistent or inconsistent. Now again, I'm just going to go through this a bit quicker. Uh, we set it up in the exact same way with a column for each connective. And then we set up our truth table in the same way. True, false. And then we do the carrying through. P, P, and I look for my Q's. Q, 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 oops, and I look for my R's. No problem. Now I'm just going to copy paste this for a little bit of easier. Uh, okay, so I'm looking for the main connectives. So the main connective of the first one, it's either the OR or the biconditional. Well, it's clearly the biconditional because the OR is uh, tied up in the brackets and it doesn't bind everything. So what about the second one? Well, the second one, also the brackets make it clear. It's the conditional. And the third sentence is the biconditional as well, because by con the negation has the lowest um, ranking in the hierarchy. OK, so again, I just like to go from easiest sentence out. The easiest sentence is clearly the third sentence. Negation modifies the R. That's very straightforward. It just reverses this. And then now I can look at the biconditional. Now the biconditional is true when both sides are the same. And remember, I'm looking at the main connective of the right side here, which is the negation. So here the Q is true, the negation is false, so that's false, but these, they're both the same, so that's true, and so on. So we'll just continue and finish this out. Okay, that's easy. Uh, now, over here, I want this uh, conditional here. But I realize that the consequent of this conditional is complicated, so what's the main connective of this? Well, it's the OR, because the negation only modifies the Q, which means I do the negation first. And then now I can do the OR, staring at only the negation column and the P column. So OR is true whenever either side is true or both. So this is pretty straightforward as well. Now I can do the conditional, and the conditional, I'm going to look at the antecedent, which is R, and the consequent, which is the truth value of the consequent, is only the truth value of the main connect of the, con of the consequent, which is these, this OR here. Okay, so I'm ready to go. 
And remember, it's only false in the case where we have a true antecedent and a false consequent. Okay, now finally over here, I have to do Q or R. Well, that's pretty straightforward. And now I can do the biconditional. Remember, the biconditional is true when they're the same. And I'm looking at the OR column as well with the P column. And I get true, 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 false, 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 true. OK. Now, consistency is a pretty easy one to check. A set of sentences is consistent if all the sentences, if it's possible for all the sentences to be true. So I'm just looking for a single TVA where they are all true all the um, sentences. Well, so this is pretty easy. Let's just focus on the first sentence. Here, the first sentence in row one is true, then the, the second sentence is true, but the third one is false, so that's no good. True, true, true. Oh, okay, well, there it is. Here is an example of a sentence of a TVA where the first sentence is true, the second sentence is true, and the third sentence is true. Notice I don't even need to look at the rest of the sentences because all I need to find for consistency is a single TVA. So how could I justify this? I could say um, consistent because on TVA 2 all sentences are true. And that's it. All right, this is how you do full truth tables. They're very simple. The two lessons I really want to make clear are the truth value, the main connective of each section determines what the truth value of that sentence is, and also know what it is you're trying to show, and then it makes it really easy. Good luck.